Mananan MacLear is a mythological character that turns up in old stories from Ireland, the Isle of Man and Wales. Why was he so popular? Hello, my name is Gwilym Morris Baird and this is Celtic Source. In Irish myth, Mananan MacLear is one of the leaders of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the semi-divine race that inhabited Ireland in the mythical past. As with the rest of his people, he has supernatural attributes and has been described as a sorcerer, a god and even a heathen. The Irish Mananan makes one of his earliest appearances in the 9th century voyage of Bran, where an Irish king sets out to sea to discover the wondrous land of women, an otherworldly paradise of perpetual youth and beauty. While out at sea, Bran and his men witness a wonder, a man riding a chariot across the waves towards them. This man says he is Mananan MacLear and recites a poem where he relates many wondrous things to the mortal king. Mananan begins by claiming that what Bran sees as the sea, he himself perceives as a great plain covered in flowers. What is a clear sea for the proud skiff in which Bran is? That is a happy plain with profusion of flowers to me from the chariot of two wheels. He claims this fruitful plain is his land and that it contains many inhabitants that are invisible to Bran. He also says that his kingdom is a land of perpetual youth. We are from the beginning of creation, without old age, without consummation of earth. Hence we expect not that there should be frailty. The sin has not come to us. After a quick digression into a very Catholic warning against original sin, Mananan goes on to relate how he intends to travel to the land of mortals and conceive a special son who will delight the company of every she or fairy mound. He will be the darling of every goodly land. He will make known secrets, a course of wisdom in the world without being feared. Mananan is in fact referring to another old Irish story here, The Conception of Mongan, which we'll discuss in more detail in the online course. Mananan is essentially claiming that he, an otherworldly king, is going to found a royal lineage in the mortal realm. This very evocative depiction of Mananan MacLear is one of the clearest images we have of him, and he retains this essential character in several other Irish tales, not only taking on the leadership of his immortal brethren, the Tuatha but also striving to influence the world of mortals. And surprisingly, perhaps, Mananan found his way from Ireland to Manin, the Isle of Man, which had been settled by the Irish sometime in the 5th century. The Gaelic speakers that settled there arrived with an already ancient cultural history, and although that culture evolved into something uniquely Manx over time, the Gaelic roots of their identity was preserved across the centuries. Mananan MacLear, or Manin Beg MacLearcha, as the Manx came to call him, was one of the cornerstones of the continuing Celtic identity of the Isle of Man, so much so that they named their island after him. The island may well have had supernatural associations before the Irish settled there, and with it being named after this mythical sorcerer king, immortal god of the ancient world, the otherworldly status of man was firmly cemented. There are suggestions that not only the Irish, but also the Scots and the Welsh considered the Isle of Man to be an otherworldly paradise, home and birthplace of gods and heroes. In a Gaelic poem in praise of one of its 12th century kings, the Isle of Man is called Ewain Avalach, an enchanted land of apples and abundance. This sounds very similar to the name of a mythical Welsh king known as Avallach, who was also the mythical ancestor of several royal lineages in Wales. This, of course, is the origin of the name Avalon in English. In Manx tradition, Manin Beg Maca Liacha, or Little Manin, son of Liacha, was a mythical king of man, well loved by his people. He was a mild ruler. The tribute that he exacted from his followers was a bart of liacha glass, green sedge. The word liacha is manx for a person who deserved to be rewarded. Manin acquired the name on account of being a person who deserved to be rewarded. 
According to custom, this tribute of green sedge was given every Midsummer's Eve up until relatively recently. The common folk of the island would lay handfuls of this tall grass along the paths to churches, or carry it to the tops of hills. But for all of the similarities between the Gaelic Man in Beg and Mananan Maclear, it's actually quite difficult to see how either of these are related to the Welsh Manawadan Vabhlir, whose story is told in the third branch of the Mabinogi. Apart from their almost identical names, there are very few explicit similarities between the Welsh and Gaelic versions of this mythical king. The one similarity that's easy to spot is that they all have some connection to Enchanted Mist, Mananan Maclir can supposedly summon up a great mist as in the adventure of Cormac, and according to folk tradition, Man in Beg can shroud the Isle of Man in mist so as to hide it from his enemies. The Welsh Manor Wuddan is also associated with enchanted mist in the third branch of the Mabinogi, but as an enchantment against him called up by his enemy. But if we look a little closer, we can actually find many other similarities between the stories of these three characters. As we'll discuss on the course, there are several similarities between the second branch of the Mabinogi and the voyage of Bran, and several more similarities between the third branch of the Mabinogi and the adventure of Cormac. One thing that all of these similarities boil down to is the fact that Mananan is closely related to the idea of a good king. In Irish myth, he is portrayed as the leader of the Tuatha de Danann in their final difficult days, leading them to immortal safety in the mounds. As mentioned in Manx folklore, Manin was one who not only received tribute from his subjects, but was one who fully deserved it, suggesting he was a good king. In the Welsh triads, Manawadan is known as one of the three humble chieftains of Britain, because even though he didn't seek a kingdom, neither could one be denied him, so great was his virtue. In essence, Mananan is an ideal of kingship, a celebration of the perfect male ruler. This basic similarity between the Gaelic and Welsh stories suggests that both cultures inherited the same basic figure from their common ancestor, the earlier common Celtic. It could well be the case that Mananan Maclir is a figure whose roots stretch back to the time before the Welsh and Gaelic languages diverged. According to some scholars, Common Celtic diverged into P and Q Celtic probably no later than the end of the Bronze Age, about 800 BC. Is this a credible argument for the antiquity of this important mythological figure? Or did the Welsh just borrow Mananan from the Irish, or vice versa? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting, please like and share, and if you want to see more, subscribe and click the bell. You can find the different sources I use to make this video at celticsource.online, just follow the link in the description below. Diolch